Hello, hello, hello. Welcome back to Wednesday Night with Richard. <laughs> um, anyway, we're just going to give everybody a minute to get on because we did sign in just a few minutes, a few seconds early. Um, tonight we are going to continue looking at rest. Um, glad you could be here with us. Just waiting. Give everybody another minute. Hope everybody's doing well. Unfortunately, we cannot see comments right now while it's playing. Um, I'm not sure why, but you can put comments and I will come back and um, respond to those when you um, put them later. So um, feel free to say things, ask questions, um, give an amen. Feel free to share this video, like the video. Um, you can do a little watch party even if you wanted. Um, whatever you want to do, feel free. So I think that we will get started. Um, where are we at? We hit 7 o'clock. Okay, so we're going to get started. All right, Richard, go ahead and take it away. Okay. So, um, last few weeks we've been looking at the word rest in the New Testament. <clears throat> and um, the, about two weeks ago, we looked at uh, rest and the idea of finding our rest in God and His work in a world full of turmoil. And then last week, we looked at the dangers of resting at the wrong time. <clears throat> and so this week, we're going to look at a time to rest. And uh, more importantly, I think what this little bit of scripture brings out is um, who we find our rest in, who we rest with, really. So um, we're going to read from Mark chapter 6, <clears throat> and I'm just going to read verses 30 through 32. And it says... Then the apostles gathered to Jesus and told him all things, both what they had done and what they had taught. And he said to them, Come aside by yourself to a deserted place and rest a while. For there were many coming and going, and they did not even have time to eat. So they departed to a deserted place in the boat by themselves. <clears throat> okay, so, of course, there's a lot of context here, so I'm just going to fill this in for you, because for sake of time, I'm not going to read whole couple of chapters um, but what had happened right before this is that uh, Jesus had sent out his disciples two by two and he had told them you know uh, you're not going to take any money with you you're not going to take an extra coat you're just going to um, go out preach the gospel and then whoever invites you into their home for dinner or whatever to stay the night um, great uh, you know bless that house and then move on and, and uh, so they did that he had given them some power to um, uh, cast out demons and so, um, so they had been out um, preaching and teaching and um, uh, doing work and now they have come back and oh there we are, are we back I think on? we're back sorry about that I don't know what happened we gotta love technology <laughs> the thing decided to cut out right in the middle of it but uh, okay let me see if I can pick up yeah so they were out the disciples were out preaching and teaching and doing work and they had come back and they're um, getting back with the Lord Jesus, and um, <clears throat> so he says, you guys have been out working, you've been busy, uh, let's uh, come aside to a deserted place and let's rest for a while, right? So they get into a boat, uh, the Sea of Galilee is sort of centered in Israel, and uh, Jesus and his disciples did a lot of sailing back and forth to different cities, and so they get into the boat and they cross over the Sea of Galilee. Um, What's interesting is that uh, when they get to the other side, <clears throat> there's actually a large multitude of people waiting there because they saw where Jesus was going. And so, of course, once they get there, this supposedly deserted place is full of people. And then, of course, the Lord Jesus has compassion and he begins to teach. And so, really, their resting time was the time in the boat. That really was where they rested. And um, I think that's... Um, I guess kind of significant because, um, you know, the, 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 well, I guess the, when we're doing physical work, right, we need, uh, we need physical rest, but when we're doing spiritual work, we need spiritual rest, and the Lord Jesus knew that, um, but he also had compassion on people, and he, whenever people needed him, uh, he was almost always there for them, um, but I think what's significant is that the boat ride across the Sea of Galilee is where the, 
It was just the disciples and the Lord Jesus, right? It was just them. And there, I think, is where they had the time to rest. And what's, I think, significant about that is that it, their rest was after they had worked and done what uh, the Lord had asked them to do, and then they were spending time with the Lord Jesus. So that's why I say there's a time to rest. We need to rest. When we do spiritual work, we get tired. We need to rest. But I think the important part about this story that I want to bring out is that their rest was with the Lord Jesus. And that's why I said, more importantly, who we rest with or rest in, right? Um, you know, interestingly enough, following the, um, on when they get to the other side and the Lord Jesus teaches and then he feeds them, uh, another one of his feeding miracles, and then he sends the disciples again back across the lake uh, while he disperses the people. And that particular story, the disciples are out in the, in the uh, lake, it's a large lake, Sea of Galilee, <clears throat> and they're rowing hard because the wind and the waves and there's a lot of um, you know, turmoil and they're struggling. And so the Lord Jesus, he comes to them walking on the water and when he gets in the boat, of course, everything becomes calm. Mm. And so I think um, probably Mark in writing his gospel has set this up this way so that you kind of see the difference between the first boat ride, which had the Lord Jesus in it, and the second boat ride, which did not until, of course, he came. And uh, again, just I think bringing home this idea that um, we need to rest in the Lord Jesus. We need to rest with him um, when we're tired from spiritual work, uh, doing the Lord's work, um, we want to make sure that our rest is not just, I don't know, in worldly things, I guess you could say, because it's God who is going to re-energize us, right? It's getting with the Lord Jesus who's going to re-energize us and give us the energy that we need to go back out and continue to work. You know, it's interesting that <clears throat> one of the things that the Lord Jesus actually did after he sent the disciples off and he dispersed the crowd is he actually went up on a mountain by himself to pray so here's uh, Jesus God's son going to commune with the father after he had been working all day mm -hmm. right so uh, we just see this pattern over and over again that our rest should be um, with the Lord Jesus and, and resting in him and resting um, in God and um, uh, getting our energy from him, because he energizes us with his spirit to do his spiritual work, right? So, um, there is a time to rest. Um, we do need to re-energize, but uh, I guess the moral of this story is let's make sure that our rest is in the right place and with the right person, and that would be God. So, I hope that's a blessing. Um, next week, Lord willing, We'll be looking at another scripture, and I've basically entitled this one, uh, Resting Without God. Mm. So uh, that'll be next week. So hope you enjoyed this, and I uh, hope it's a blessing. Great to have you all. Thanks for coming, and we'll see you next week. Oh, don't forget to come on Friday morning for the cooking. All right, bye.